welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to read a special book and it's called Mercy Watson Goes for a Ride by Kate DiCamillo, illustrated by Chris Van Dusen. I hope you like this book, so let's get started. Mercy Watson Goes for a Ride by Kate DiCamillo, illustrated by Chris Van Dusen. Chapter 1. Mr. Watson and Mrs. Watson have a pig named Mercy. Every Saturday, Mrs. Watson makes a special lunch. Time for our little Saturday something, Mrs. Watson says. You've outdone yourself, Mrs. Watson, Mr. Watson says. Oink, says Mercy. Every Saturday after lunch, Mr. Watson goes outside. Mercy follows him. They stand in the driveway. Together, they admire Mr. Watson's convertible. Are you ready? asks Mr. Watson. Oink, says Mercy. Mr. Watson opens the passenger door. Mercy hops into the car. She sits behind the wheel. She snuffles contentedly. Chapter 2, <laughs> says Mr. Watson every Saturday. You, my dear, are a porky wonder, but even porky wonders cannot drive cars. Mr. Watson gently pushes Mercy toward the passenger seat, but Mercy does not move. She does not want to sit in the passenger seat. Mercy Watson wants to drive, <laughs> says Mr. Watson again. She pushes less gently. Scoot over, my dear. Mercy does not move. Help me, Mr. Watson calls out. Every Saturday, Mrs. Watson steps outside. Darling, Mrs. Watson says, if you let Mr. Watson drive, I will make you an extra helping of hot butter toast. I will have it waiting for you when you get back home. Mercy narrows her eyes. She loves hot butter toast. She also loves extra helpings. Slowly, very slowly, she moves over to the passenger side. What a dear, said, says Mrs. Watson. She claps her hands. You are such a good sport, darling. Yes, says Mr. Watson. She most certainly is. He gets in the car and sits behind the wheel. The, he turns the key in the ignition. The Watson convertible rumbles to life. Chapter 3. Bon voyage, Mrs. Watson calls. Bon voyage, my dears. When you get home, we will all have hot butter toast. Goodbye, Mrs. Watson, Mr. Watson shouts. He backs the car out of the driveway very quickly. He does not look behind him. Mr. Watson is a forward-looking man. He does not believe in looking back. Oink, says Mercy. Already she is having a good time. And we're off, says Mr. Watson. We're off on an adventure. Chapter 4. Eugenia Lincoln and Baby Lincoln live next door to the Watsons. Every Saturday, the Lincoln sisters watch Mercy and Mr. Watson back out of the driveway. Every Saturday, Eugenia is displeased. Mr. Watson is a very bad driver, she says. He is a menace behind the wheel. Yes, sister, says Baby. Furthermore, says Eugenia, it is my firm opinion that pigs should not be taken for rides in automobiles, particularly that pig. That pig is a sly pig. I do not trust her. No, sister, says Baby. Baby looks down the road. The car has disappeared. 
Mr. Watson and Mercy are gone. Very, says Eugenia Lincoln. She shakes her fist. It is Foley, I say. Yes, sister, says Baby. But secretly, Baby Lincoln thinks that a little Foley wouldn't be a bad thing. Chapter 5 One Saturday, Mrs. Watson made a special lunch. After lunch, Mr. Watson and Mercy went outside. Everything happened just as it always did every Saturday on Dekahu Drive. What folly, says Eugenia Lincoln as usual. What nonsense, she paused. Eugenia waited for our baby to say, Yes, sister, but baby said nothing. Baby said nothing because baby was not there. Chapter 6 Officer Tamilello sat in his police cruiser. A pink convertible sped past him. Was that a pig? Officer Tamilio asked himself. Yes, it was, he answered himself. That most certainly was a pig. Is it illegal to take a pig for a ride? Officer Tamilello asked himself. I don't believe it is, he answered himself. It is unusual, he continued. But unusual does not equal illegal. However, it is illegal to speed, and that vehicle was definitely speeding. Officer Tamilello turned on his flashing lights. He pulled out onto the highway. He followed the car with the pig in it. Chapter 7 In the car with the pig in it, the pig was having a very good time. The wind was tickling her ears. The sun was warm on her snout. Even though she was not the one behind the wheel, Mercy was happy. Mr. Watson was happy too. There is nothing like a fast drive to clear the mind, he shouted. Isn't that right, my dear? Oink, said Mercy. It is wonderful to go fast, said a voice from the back seat. Who said that, said Mr. Watson. Me, said Baby Lincoln. Mr. Watson looked over his shoulder. Hello, Mr. Watson, said Baby. Oink, said Mercy. Hello, Mussy said baby what are you doing shouted mr watson i am having a little adventure said baby i am indulging in some foley foley said mr watson mercy narrowed her eyes mr watson was looking over his shoulder at baby he was not looking at the road Mercy saw her chance. She gathered her strength. She leaped. Oof! Help! Mr. Watson said. Help me! Woo-wee! Said Baby Lincoln. What family! What fun! What adventure! Please! Said Mr. Watson. Get off me! He pushed at Mercy with both hands, but Mercy did not move. She put her front hooves on the steering wheel. She was in the driver's seat, and she intended to stay there. Chapter 8 Back on Takahu Drive, Eugenia Lincoln was looking for Baby. She looked in Baby's bed. Baby was not there. She looked on the back step. Baby was not there either. Bye bye, shouted Eugenia. Reveal yourself at once. But Baby did not reveal herself. Where could she be? said Eugenia. Why do I think this has something to do with that pig? Eugenia marched next door. She, she rang a Watson's bell. Mrs. Watson, said Eugenia. Baby as a mustn. Goodness, said Mrs. Watson. And I believe that your pig is responsible, said Eugenia. Mercy, said Mrs. Watson. Yes said Eugenia. Exactly. But Mercy is not here, said Mrs. Watson. She is on her Saturday ride with Mr. Watson. Eugenia turned and looked down the road. 
Foley, she said. Heavens, said Mrs. Watson. You don't think? I do think, said the genie. That is my point exactly. I do think. Apparently, I am the only one around here who does. Chapter 9. Officer Tomilello had to go very fast to catch up with the convertible. The officer had his speed. Is that vehicle swerving? Officer Tomilello asked himself. It is, he answered himself. It is most definitely swerving. Is the driver of that vehicle breaking the law? So Tomilello asked. Without a doubt, he answered. The law is being broken. It is time to take action. Officer Tomilello pulled up alongside the car. He shouted into his bullhorn, Pull over! The driver turned. The driver looked at him. The driver oinked. Is that pig behind the wheel? Officer Tomilello asked himself. Yes, he answered himself. Yes, that pig is most definitely behind the wheel. Again, Officer Tomilello shouted to his bullhorn, Pull over! Pigs cannot drive cars! Pull over! Immediately! He is absolutely correct, said Mr. Watson. Pigs cannot drive cars, and I would like to pull over, but I can no longer feel my legs. Therefore, I cannot step on the brake pedal. Therefore, I cannot stop this car. Oh dear, said Baby. I think we are in trouble. Chapter 10 Back on Takuhu Drive, Mrs. Watson invited Jeannie outside. There's no point in worrying alone, Mrs. Watson says. Come in and help me fix a snack for my darlings. Mrs. Watson brought Jeannie into the kitchen. Will you help me butter some toast? asked Mrs. Watson. Toast? grumbled Jeannie. Who cares about toast? Don't worry, said Mrs. Watson. She patted Jeannie on the back. If Baby is with Mr. Watson, then she is just fine. Mr. Watson is an excellent driver. He is a manace, said Jeannie. Pardon, said Mrs. Watson. Nothing, said Jeannie. She picked up a piece of toast. She applied the tiniest amount of butter. Oh heavens, said Mrs. Watson. You have to put on more than that. Mercy likes a great deal of butter on her toast. Who cares how pigs like their toast? Eugenia said. There, there, said Mrs. Watson. I know that you are worried, but everything will work out. Baby will come home. In the meantime, why don't we just concentrate on our buttering? Toast is not the answer, grumbled Jeannie. But she buttered another piece anyway. Chapter 11 You must stop the car, shouted Officer Tomilello. But I cannot stop the car, said Mr. Watson. Oink, oink, said Mercy. She was having an excellent time. I have an idea, Mr. Watson, said Baby Lincoln. If you tell me where the brake pedal is, I will apply it. The brake pedal, said Mr. Watson from underneath Mercy, is the pedal to the left of the gas pedal. The brake pedal is the pedal that I do not have my foot on. Baby unbuckled her seatbelt. She climbed into the front seat. She put her seatbelt on. She slid as close to Mr. Watson as she could. She looked down. She saw Mr. Watson's foot. She saw the pedal next to it. I have located the brake pedal, Mr. Watson, Baby announced. Excellent, said Mr. Watson. Now apply it. Baby stretched across Mr. Watson. I am applying the brake pedal, Mr. Watson, Baby shouted. Hold on, hold on, everyone. Chapter 12 
The car screeched. The car shuddered. The car careened. The car caromed, and finally, the car stopped. Mercy was very surprised. Suddenly, she was not driving the car. Suddenly, she was not even in the car. Suddenly, Mercy was airborne. Mr. Watson was wearing his seatbelt. He did not fly out of the car. Baby Lincoln was wearing her seatbelt. She did not fly out of the car. Officer Tamilello was safe in his police cruiser. He did not fly out of his car. Only Mercy flew. Oh dear," said Baby. "It's an emergency!" shouted Mr. Watson. "Alert the fire department!" "Was that baby wearing a seatbelt?" Officer Tamalello asked. "No," he asked, answered himself. "That pig most certainly was not." "Have laws been broken here?" asked Officer Tamalello. "Most certainly, most definitely, laws have been broken here." Mr. Watson and Baby Lincoln and Officer Tamilello watched Mercy fly. They watched her land. Woof! Mr. Watson got out of the car. He ran to Mercy. He wrapped his arms around her and held her tight. My darling, my dear, he said. Please tell me that you are all right. Oink. Said Mercy. She snuffled Mr. Watson's neck. Hooray! Said Baby. She is fine. Oh, thank you! Said Mr. Watson. Thank you, thank you, thank you! He bent his head and covered the tips of Mercy's ears with kisses. You are a miracle, a prodigy, a dear. Mr. Watson said, "You are a porkin wonder, but even porkin wonders cannot drive. In fact, porkin wonders should never be allowed to drive ever." Mercy sighed. She was glad that ride was over. She felt a tiny bit dizzy and a little bit dazed. She wanted very much to go home. Chapter Thirteen. Eugenia Lincoln and Mrs. Watson stood together on the Watsons' front porch. They watched a police car pull into the driveway. Mr. Watson and Mercy and Baby Lincoln were all in the back seat. As I suspected," said Eugenia. "Trouble, Foley, and that pig is right in the middle of it." Oh," said Mrs. Watson. "My darlings, my dears!" She ran out to the police car. "I am so glad that you are home. The toast was starting to get cold." Mr. Watson and Baby Lincoln got out of the car. "We have had something of an adventure, Mrs. Watson," Mr. Watson said. "Yes." Said baby, we have had an adventure, sister. Foley replied, Eugenia Lincoln. Yes, agreed baby Lincoln happily. Foley, laws have been broken, said Officer Tamilello. Pig, said Eugenia. Excuse me, said Officer Tamilello. It's all the pig's fault, said Eugenia. She pointed at Mercy. Mercy climbed out of the car. She put her nose up in the air. She sniffed. Could it be? Yes, it was toast. Toast with a great deal of butter on it. What could be better? Chapter fourteen. Laws have been broken," said Officer Timelello. Tickets must be written. Officer, do you like toast? Mrs. Watson asked. Toast? Said Officer Tamilo. Do I like toast? Why, yes, I do. I do like toast. Why don't you come inside and have some? Asked Mrs. Watson. Why don't I come inside and have some toast? Asked Officer Tamilo. Hmm. Said Officer Tamilo. I can't think of a reason not to. Lovely," said Mrs. Watson. She clapped her hands together. "Right this way." "What nonsense!" grumbled Eugenia Lincoln. "Toast is not the answer." 
No, sister, said Baby Lincoln, but it does smell heavenly. She took hold of Eugenia's hand. Well, said Eugenia, it has been expertly buttered. And so that Saturday, Officer Tamillo and Eugenia Lincoln and Baby Lincoln and Mr. and Mrs. Watson and Mercy Watson all sat around the table together and ate hot buttered toast. Did Mercy Watson have extra helpings? She did, and so did Officer Tamillo. The end. I hope you all enjoy this book. So in this book, there was 14 chapters. If you like this book, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Bye-bye, everyone. See you in the next video.